What's up, college football fans and Iowa Hawkeye fans? Welcome into another Iowa fan perspective here in the Play the Fight Song College Football Show family. Appreciate you jumping in. Appreciate you checking this out on YouTube or wherever you're getting your podcast. Uh, been a blast. Been a blast so far. Obviously, the record is not exactly where you want it to be, but it's been a ton of fun covering the Hawks again this year. Um, from a fan perspective, not from the media sorts or from others uh, breaking X's and O's and things like that down. I just want to do it from a fan perspective on the outside who you know, cares a lot more than the average fan, it feels like at times, and then uh, puts a lot of time and uh, a true passion into Iowa athletics and Iowa football specifically here, which is why we have the Play the Fight Song brand. If you're new to us, weekly college football show live on X, Facebook, YouTube, every week, usually Wednesday nights, we'll preview the matchups coming up for that week, and then we'll do a recap Sunday that gets released on the games that happen that Saturday. It's been a ton of fun, absolute blast. So, if you're here for the Iowa side, welcome in, welcome in, welcome back. If you're here for the Michigan State side, welcome in. Tons of fun. I try to be as um, neutral as possible in this, but obviously it's very Iowa leaned. Uh, I will talk Michigan State stuff, kind of tell Iowa fans what they need to know about the team at a 10,000 foot view, uh, and then talk about what I think of their program at the this time, and then preview the game. Obviously coming up on Saturday should be a great one at night uh, inside Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. I think. Last year was a really good game uh, in Kinnick, and now we're going to play in back-to-back years for the first time in a while, so we'll be up in East Lansing. This time should be a ton of fun. Before we get truly rolling here, No Rivals, again, shopnorivals.com, our sponsor here. Get yourself a nice collegiate hat, or if you just want to do their branded ones, have a ton of fun with that. But if you use code PTFS at checkout, you get free shipping. They've been great partners. Iowa is on shopnorivals.com. I am not 100% sure if Michigan State is, but if you are looking for just a really cool hat or you have a team on the side or you know somebody goes to a certain school or went to a school and you need to get a Christmas present here coming up, code PTFS, free shipping at checkout. Check those guys out. They've been a ton of fun to work with, and they've treated us great. So check those guys out at shopnorivals.com once again. Let's jump right into it. Let's do a little bit of Washington recap. I think I did a lot of things. Um, in the last preview kind of explaining what I thought about the Washington matchup. And I, I thought I hit it pretty spot on in some spots. Uh, I, I just found a couple of clips where, where we're talking about Will Rogers and his zero to nine yard passing game and how, if he gets comfortable throwing um, these outs and these hitches, and at some point somebody's going to jump on and you got one by Jamari Harris there in the third quarter. That was perfect. Um, you read him like a book. Rogers hadn't seen anybody jump it or even look to jump it all day, threw it out quick. Jamari picks it off. Uh, he's a shoestring tackle away from scoring six there on that on that one. So, uh, and then I really felt like we could handle the run game on them. I admit Washington fans are very confident in the comments about um, they hadn't seen a defense like Washington and they just played Michigan who can run the ball. Uh, and, and to be frank with you, that's fine. I, I just don't think Michigan's as good as an offense as Iowa is. Like if we're being just dead honest, I would had to throw the ball 12 times. I think McNamara was eight of 12 uh, through that thing. And to, Two touchdown passes, yeah, and it didn't matter because Iowa could run the ball between the tackles. Uh, Washington looked over, uh, overmatched, just not big enough for the Big Ten. Like it just there was a size differential along the offensive defensive line there. Um, good for the offense uh, in Iowa to just lean. It is schematic schematically it looked great. Like there was a lot of things working that hadn't been shown, um, and a lot of things that worked really well. The Lester stuck with, and then mixed a few wrinkles in to really change things up on Washington, who you know for the most part was solid, but long drives and then you lose field position battle. And then you start turning it over. Things get really tough and tough to win games in that situation. So Will Rogers was good. Uh, they had a couple long drives, a blocked kick, a kick that went in. Um, that was debatable. I, again, I was there in Kinnick. I could not tell that. I mean, you could have told me you missed. You could have told me it went in. I had no say from just where I was and what we were seeing on the angles. I had no clue whether it went in or not. So it went in. That's kind of how that worked. Um, but they had a lot of long drives. They took a lot of what was given to them. And just being able to do that consistently and then score touchdowns in the red zone got a little tough for them. And then obviously the turnovers as well. Um, Kate had another management game. Again, I think he's like eight for 12 with two touchdowns. Like just one of those things. Like do, do what you got to do. Don't turn it over and you'll feel really good about things. Uh, Sullivan had a couple snaps, almost disastrous in one spot. That wasn't great. Didn't love to see that near the goal line. Just hold on to the ball, go down, handle the snap as well would help. Um, in that spot, I, one more thing, like 
the D-line pressure is back for the Hawks. I don't know if you guys noticed that one in there. Uh, it's a ton of fun to see that and give them a chance to just get after the quarterback a little bit, especially going into this week, this week where I feel like Michigan State's offensive line hasn't been great, and there's an opportunity for Iowa to continue that um, moment, momentum on the defensive front and even in the linebacking core, getting after the quarterback and making sure – uh, the DBs aren't just running around there for six, seven, eight seconds having to cover guys that are athletic on the back end because it gets tough, and it um, that's how big plays happen. So uh, really excited to see that. And something I really thought we wanted um, for the last couple of years is just haven't had an elite pass rush. One more thing, I just want to shout out one guy, Jack or Jacob Nestor. I know he got beat on a, uh, a mess route late in that game for a touchdown, but I thought when he came in late in that game, he was really good. He was blowing up blocks, making tackles. Uh, made a couple plays and then you know just get lost in a shuffle of crossing routes uh, and patterns inside the end zone it's tough but I thought the kid played really well so that's some Washington recap some quick thoughts on it I thought that was a game you should win and I thought it was a game we would win uh, maybe not as handily as I we ended up winning but uh, I was definitely more confident than most in that one so flipping the page turning the page we're going to go on the road again um, to talk Michigan State. Yeah, Iowa goes to Michigan State Saturday night, 6.30 Central. That kick is. Should be a ton of fun. I'm pumped for it. I feel like Iowa's had um, some great memories up there and then some absolute heartbreakers just against Michigan State uh, in general. There's been some great games through the years. I can remember Kirk Cousins and that team coming down to Iowa City a long time ago with the Hyde and um, Sash Pitch INT touchdown. Um, Seven gets six up there in East Lansing, and then obviously Michigan State getting us in the Big Ten title game, which was just absolutely crushing. Um, but two programs that uh, have had some good stories behind them and great matchups through the years, and I'm really pumped to talk about this team because I think they made it a significantly great hire this offseason. So we'll start right there, actually. Jonathan Smith, I think, is a great hire. Uh, comes over from Michigan State where, you know, that's a team in a school who it's not going to be, you know, world-beating. They're not going to win 9, 10, 11 games a year but it's a program he got really moving in the right direction and kind of made an identity there where they play a uh, very pro style set. They're going to run the football well. they'll play solid defense. They lull teams into a little bit, kind of an Iowa style where they just, um, they stay in games and then they'll bite you somewhere down the road. And if it's not the death blow, then it's death by a thousand club or a thousand cuts. So um, he had that program rolling, obviously with the, change into the tide in college sports and where all the teams go and all the alignment. I think there was some talk, um, maybe he gets a bigger job before that, before that all happened. I mean, the guy was on radars for everybody. Um, Michigan state offers takes the job at Michigan state. And I think it's a great fit. I think this is a team in a program that could really, um, adopt his mentality and kind of what his programs look like. Cause I feel like this is a program that's been that in the past, if that makes sense. Do you think of those good Michigan state teams? They were very similar, um, to what, Jonathan Smith was doing at Oregon State. Obviously, they were better football teams, just the talent difference between those two schools. But there's a real opportunity for Jonathan Smith to build something in East Lansing that is really respected and loved um, around the state and around the Big Ten. I think he's a guy people like. Like, There's no ill will towards him. I don't think anybody in the Pac-12 disliked Jonathan Smith, well-liked in the industry. So I, I think it's a great hire and it's a culture builder, but it's not going to be a one-year thing as we've seen throughout this year. And then before I even got there, just the portal exodus um, after Mel Tucker and some stuff like it just, it, it's a tougher spot and a tougher job to take over at this moment. But I think he's got the ship moving in the right direction. Uh, currently three straight losses for the Spartans, two in big 10 play, obviously two of those in the big 10 uh, to Ohio state and Oregon. So they've hit the cream of the crop, two best teams in the conference, in my opinion. Um, and got beat by both of them pretty handily. It, it's tough. I mean, Iowa, you watched Iowa go play Ohio State and get beat pretty good too. So it's not like it's anything obscure. Like that's compared them um, by similar opponents and telling me one team's better than the other. Like that's just not gonna how it's going to be. Uh, Michigan State also has a loss to Boston College, a Boston College team that is kind of faded. I mean, come back down to earth after everybody watching them beat Florida State, just drub Florida State actually. Um, in week one, I believe, and everybody thinking, realizing Florida State's not very good. Is Boston College very good? You know, like it, they're all right, uh, to be honest with you. And so I think that's a good measuring stick. They do have a good comeback win against Maryland in conference. That is one of the more fun games to watch. If you haven't got a chance to see the highlights on that one, that would got pretty crazy. Um, it actually gave Jonathan Smith his first Big Ten win at Michigan State. Let's start with kind of we're talking comebacks and what drives a good comeback, a quarterback. And they got a guy in Aiden Childs, a young kid, uh, highly tied out of high school. They brought him over to Michigan or to Oregon State, follows 
uh, Jonathan Smith over to Michigan State, and he's been good. He's been the guy. Um, I think he's still young and growing, and I think that's very evident in how he plays, and that was a worry coming into this year. Uh, people are starting to catch on to just the, the Aiden Childs experience, some might call it, where you you simply see a guy who is trying to make a lot of plays and be Superman a little bit too much when he just needs to stay within the offense and not make too many mistakes. At the same time, let's let him be him, right? Like you don't want to take a young kid with all this talent and put him in a box and say, this is only what you can do. You got to let him be himself a little bit. It's just turnovers and poor decisions have been a problem early in his career, and I think that's something understood, and that's just a growing, um, a growing pain that he'll get out of at some point in time. Childs has been really good. He can move. Uh, he can throw the ball. He's got great arm talent. The issue also with that is that he hasn't had a great offensive line or a run game supporting him. Uh, if you look at exactly where Michigan State ranks offensively, uh, the run game has been really poor. They're 93rd in yards per rush at 3.8 in the country, and they're 107th in rush yards a game at 120.2. Uh, it, it just hasn't been there. Like The offensive line hasn't been able to block it. They haven't found a guy in the backfield to kind of workhorse it. Uh, it's been a lot by committee trying to find the hot hand in the backfield. Um, I know they had some injuries up front as well that kind of stifled some things. And they've also played two really good defenses. Like if we're going to be honest, like or getting Oregon and Ohio State is definitely going to floss some numbers a little bit. Um, and they've shown flashes of being good offensively. If you go and look at what they did uh, to Maryland, like I was talking about in the Boston College game, even there were some real shots for um, Michigan State and flashing some some promise, but most of that was still through the air and it was not necessarily uh, in the ground game. Like I'm looking here at, at just some stats from the team. Like if you look at what the rush game has done, it's it's a total of 721 yards, which is less than Caleb Johnson has by himself offensively. Uh, Lynch Adams has got 67 carries for 338 yards, it's five yards a pop. It's not a bad average at all. But then you go down to Carter, who's got 58 carries for 245. 4.2 like it just it's not explosive it hasn't been good it hasn't been consistent again those are going to be skewed by who they played um but at the same time it ain't like they were beating the tar out of fau week one or they you know really blew up a all right at best boston college defense like it, it's just one of those things and i think things have equaled out i think you know more about michigan state than what the numbers suggest suggest um offensively Childs right now with just over 1,200 yards, five touchdowns, I believe eight interceptions on the year, sacked 13 times. Not great uh, to get sacked 13 times in six games. That's not good. Uh, it bodes well for Iowa, though. Like if you just got some pressure last week on Will Rogers, I understand Childs is tougher to get. Excuse me, a little bit more mobile. Uh, gets out of the pocket a lot better. And uh, like honestly, um, it just feels like he's a guy that they're going to maybe uh, teach to – not take as many sacks and kind of let him play that role a little bit, like try to make his plays. And again, letting him be him goes a long ways in all of this. Um, but the, the completion percentage is very alarming at 56.6%. Like, yeah, I understand you throwing picks and stuff, but that's a lot of balls that are just not caught either. And it's been poor decisions, poor passes, the arm talents there, just guys not there. Uh, receiving wise, I have a couple names written down on guys that, uh, to pay attention to. I got Jack Valley in the tight end. I think he's a really good tight end. He's another big 10 tight end to pay attention to Nick Marsh uh, and Montore Foster. I, again, apologize on the pronunciation of that. Um, but these are the three guys that he's going to pay attention to. And they're three re leading receivers for this team. And it, it just, I, if I'm being honest, like they just feel like they're two or three years away from being a really good offense. Uh, I think Childs would be that guy for them in the future. Um, but they just don't have any star power outside of Childs offensively. That scares you too much. Um, I had mentioned offensively that the offensive line hadn't been great, uh, giving up 12 sacks on the year. And a lot of that is just, they lost a lot in the portal. Uh, they brought in a couple of guys that hasn't meshed well. It's a new scheme. You're kind of doing new things. And I just don't think the talent's quite there for them uh, at this moment in time. Um, there's a couple of things defensively that I wanted to talk about, like mass exodus along the defensive line. They've had a good defensive front there for a long time. Uh, but when you lose guys like by Job is a four star transfer, went to Kansas, Derek Harmon, a four star transfer, went to Oregon, uh, Simeon Barrow, three star transfer, went to Miami and Zion Young, three star transfer, went to Missouri. There isn't a ton left in the cabinet. If you're kind of picking up what I'm putting down here, but they haven't been bad. Like, honestly, like they haven't been poor along the front four. Um, 
and haven't been poor along the front seven, if we're being completely honest, like they've been solid. And I think that's a really good thing for them um, going forward, because that's something I really think they need to uh, lean on with the offensive struggles that they're currently seeing at the moment, this moment in time, we're going to go look at just what I'm seeing from afar um, in this game, like kind of into a little bit of a prediction. I think there's a real opportunity for Cade, uh, to manage another game, to make Caleb look good. Uh, the offense's line's going to have a chance to kind of uh, run the ball really well. They haven't been great defensively against the run. Has Michigan State, um, Ohio State, and Oregon both had their way with them a little bit on the ground. Boston College as well. This is, oh, I guess, it is one of the best backs they've seen this year. I'm not going to say he's better than Judkins uh, or Travion Henderson in this moment, but it it's one of the better backs. It's one of the better run schemes they've seen this year for sure. Um, obviously if you're Michigan state, you're not scared of the Iowa offense. You're not scared of the Iowa pass game. So I get the confidence going into it. Uh, and I saw on some message boards that they're not, they're not scared of playing Iowa, especially a night at home on homecoming. And, and why, why should you, you know what I mean? Like you should be confident in what you're seeing in your team. I personally don't love the matchup for Michigan state. I just think Iowa provides another heaping load of problems that just are everything Michigan state's been done, doing poorly. Uh, they force quarterbacks into bad situations and um, poor passes. Literally been child's MO throughout the entire year. Uh, they traditionally gotten after the quarterback this year, kind of been off and on. Last week was the first time in a while they'd done so. Michigan State's had problems running the football. Iowa doesn't let you run the football. Like, there are just matchup problems. Uh, their offense versus Iowa's defense. On the other side, again, I think Iowa can find a way, much like the Washington game, to just get the run game rolling in some fashion and just make it tough on on Wash or on Michigan State, sorry, um, to get off the field and, and just kind of bully them and play the long game in this one. I'm not expecting a blowout unless turnovers go crazy and you can't ever predict turnovers anyway. Um, but I think there's a real shot here um, for Iowa to win this handily, just based on where these programs are at the moment and how the team's playing as a whole. Um, I. I my prediction here, I got Iowa 31, Michigan State 17. Again, I think Childs makes a play, to, play or two that you're like, damn, I mean, we know this kid's talented, like kind of look at this, and then he makes a mistake or two that kind of hurt uh, Michigan State in the long run. Um, and I think, the, again, the rush defense for Michigan State is just not ready, uh, and it kind of lets Iowa do what they want to do in some play action spots, uh, ball out quick to, um, to Lachey or to Gill or to guys like that and just make some plays. Uh, where you need to in the past game without being explosive through the year like we've seen the last couple of weeks. So I'm um, super excited for it. It should be a great atmosphere. It's always a fun place to watch a game on TV. Uh, we'll be rocking atmosphere, I'm sure. They're really excited for this one. I think they're really looking at it like, hey, we got a real shot to win a football game here. Um, but I do think it's Iowa's to lose here, and I think they're the better football team. The special teams have been great and getting better and better. Um, it, I just think it's a poor matchup for Michigan State. Again, Michigan State fans, if you're in, if you're in here, like don't take this a knock or anything. I'm just trying to give it how I see it right now, and I, you should have confidence going into it. You shouldn't be scared of the Iowa offense. I think you should be worried about what Iowa's defense can do to Childs here this weekend. Um, I appreciate everybody joining in again. Play the fight song, family. Check us out on YouTube, X, Instagram, TikTok, all of it at Play the Fight Pod, our weekly college football show, and then everywhere you get your podcast, we drop our weekly previews. Thank you again. Appreciate it very much. Go Hawks.